Hi, welcome to Faith and Bible ASMR. For those of you that are new, we are going through a study that is called Jesus is the Answer to Your Deepest Longings. And today we're looking at Exodus 1 as we go through the Bible. If you are new, I would love for you to subscribe so I can get to know you better. If you guys enjoy this video, I so appreciate a thumbs up and sharing it with a friend. It just helps God's message to continue. I want to mention before we start into looking at God's Word today that I am involved in a fundraiser that is taking place this week and we are trying to get some money together for building a well in an underprivileged country. There are huge numbers of kids that die every day from not having clean water in the rest of the world. And for those of us that are in the U.S., I know it's hard to imagine, but they, have, they don't even have access to wells where they live. So they take water from places that are not healthy and, and then they drink it and it is really horrible to think about, honestly. So the fundraiser that we are involved in is through Life Water and I am going to list all the links below, but there will be a, a link for that and for all of the channels involved. There are six other Christian ASMR channels involved and we all have a heart for helping people and helping spread God's word and I am so thankful for them and I consider it a privilege to be a part of this even though I'm so much older than them they were gracious enough to ask me to be involved and so I want you to know that this organization incorporates the people where the well is being built to take part in things and helps them learn more about how to continue taking care of that after they leave. So it has a 92% success rate, whereas many of the other organizations doing this kind of work um, have a very low success rate according to the UN. So I'm really thankful for Christy ASMR, who is the one that put this together, and her video is going up as I speak on Sunday. So let me read for you all the channels involved. Christy ASMR on Sunday. Monday is Perfect Peace ASMR. Tuesday is is Simple Sounds ASMR. Wednesday is me. Thursday is Faith to Rise ASMR. Friday is Sleepy Curls ASMR. And Saturday is Dust and Grace ASMR. I'm thankful to know many of them. We've been developing a relationship over the last number of months since we did that other collab together this summer and that has been a blessing to my soul truly so let's look at Exodus 1 these are these are the names of the sons of Israel, that is Jacob, who moved to Egypt with their father, each with his family. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. 
In all, Jacob had 70 descendants in Egypt, including Joseph, who was already there. And so there we see a fulfillment of God's promise. In the chapters we just read in Genesis, in time, Joseph and all of his brothers died, ending that entire generation but their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Python and Ramses as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in all their demands. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women, as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this? He demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? While the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, the midwives replied, they are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. So God was good to the midwives and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River, but you may let the girls live. And I just want to take a little bit of a Bible study that was done by Wendy Light. And it says, why did God allow this pain and suffering in the lives of his chosen people? You know, them t being taken as turned into slaves and beaten and tortured. And yeah, because our all-knowing God always sees the bigger picture and has a greater purpose. He uses our times of trial and hardship to purge sin from our lives, to strengthen our walk with him, to force us to depend on him, to bind us together in community, and to cause us to know and trust him more. Isaiah speaks this truth clearly in Isaiah 48.10. It says, See, I have refined you. Though not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. God knew the best place and the best way for his people to grow in strength and numbers and early admission into the land 
that had been promised to them through Abraham wasn't it. And he knew that in the midst of their enslavement, they would experience his power, see his glory, and draw closer to him. Don't we too have our Egypts? Times we feel oppressed, forgotten, burdened, beyond what we think we can bear. Like the Israelites, it's those times that should draw us closer to God, the promise keeper who honors his word and fulfills it without exception. And so we see that God actually recorded the names of those brave women that saved the babies and didn't kill them. He hadn't even named the specific ruler of Egypt at the time, but he named these women. Why? Because these brave women chose to obey God rather than Pharaoh, and he wanted their names, God wanted their names remembered. They became heroes of the faith. I'm going to pray for us. Dear Father, I thank you. I thank you that you have a plan in place even when things are difficult for us and we see no way out. You do. You see a purpose. You see a plan. And I thank you for the times that even the hard times have helped me to trust you more or grow closer to you. Lord, I pray that each of us would turn to you when we're going through difficulty, that we would try to trust you, Lord, that we would look to your word and just claim the promises there and know that you are with us through everything. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Bye, my friends. I'll see you Wednesday.